There we go. Haircut. Boom. We're ready. <clears throat> so, uh, Martin, I'm going to answer your question first before I forget. Uh, you put a question on the other video. It was, is it possible to get a job that you don't hate, that makes you enough money to do what you want to do, um, just to support it so that you don't get burnt out doing what you want to do? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Um, the problem with that, though, the problem with that, though, is that I've been doing that for the past while, and when you have a full-time job, um, it takes a lot of your time, you know, and when you have something that is actually time, that takes up a lot of time as a hobby or as a pastime or as something that you want to do in the future, it's really difficult to consolidate the two because when I was working construction I had to wake up at six o'clock in the morning get ready for like an hour drive for a half hour get to the place work my eight to ten hour shift get home like clean up that would take another half hour another hour and so by that point I'd have what like three eight like eleven eleven or twelve hours actually spent doing the full-time job and then eight hours on top of that is put down for sleep or recommended amounts of sleep so that's already 19 hours out of a 24 hour day so that leaves you with five hours to do whatever else you need to do and that's usually taken up by eating and getting ready to eat and then i mean you'll have you'll have downtime but it's not the same it's not enough time is what i'm saying so having a part-time job i think would be a pretty good in between you know and that's kind of what I'm planning to do but that's just to answer your question so uh, number one aside from that good question though I like that um, aside from that I got a haircut check it out mm -mm, I still have some in the back I'm gonna probably dread that and um, shaved the beard shaved the sides here I think it looks okay kind of thug uh, which is nice number two Brick. Oh yeah, I got my eye surgery done. Yeah, I totally like went in and they were like, hey, check it out. We're gonna stick your face under this laser. And I was like, cool, let's do it. And they stuck my face under a laser and like pushed down on my eye super hard and everything goes black and then there's like this little multicolored thing and I could smell my eyes burning. Pretty gnarly. So that was cool, but now I can see. So I don't need glasses anymore. I don't have to rely on the man you know uh, I can just I can just actually see as a human being and that feels amazing also check out this lake right now dude that's tight freaking fog all up in here yeah it's super early in the morning I'm waking up early so I can work on a art piece also waking up early so that I can do what I call an apocalypse clean so the theory of that is that like you know, you're just hanging out doing your thing. Just, just run with me here. It's a theoretical. You're just hanging out doing your thing, and then uh, a call goes out on the ham radio across the world. And you're like, dang, ham radio that I totally have because I'm a survivalist? Wow, it must be important. And you pick it up, and they're like, yo, we got like six hours before freaking nuke hits. Ah, you got to You got to grab your junk and go, man. Go, go, go. And so the theory of an apocalypse claim is to be taking only the essentials that you need and packing up the things that you don't need but still would desire if you return to your home while throwing out everything else that's not necessary. So in the spirit of that, I'm going to be doing that with all my things because I'm going to be leaving soon and I don't want to leave half a ton of crap for other people to deal with because that's irresponsible, you know. So I'm going to be sorting through my crap I'm gonna like set a time limit like six hours and after that it has to get thrown away like if I do not reach it and decide where it goes within six hours it has to be thrown away so that's just a way to sort of try and trim down the actual amount of stuff I have and so yeah I got that I got my art piece that I'm gonna do and I actually went to the PL fair and saw my art pieces there that was cool and yeah, my trip, dude. Friggin' my trip. 
after my hiking trip, I got home and I haven't done like anything constructive or productive. Well, I mean, I have, but it's been really drawn out and I'm just waiting for my, for my machines that I ordered, that I ordered my little laptop thing. And I'm stoked for that, but I still have to wait for it. And when you buy plane tickets, they're cheaper the further out you buy them. So the cheapest plane ticket I can find to go to like Alaska or to go to anywhere else is like two weeks from now. So I'm just trying to figure out like where I'm gonna go. And right now I'm just torn by indecision and I'm just like, Ugh! I, I don't know where I'm going, but I need to leave, like I need to go. <laughs> so I'm, I'm struggling right now. Um, but I went out last night to pray and I came out here and I heard all these noises and splashes and I saw beavers, man. There were like four beavers just eating crap out here. And they're huge, dude. They're huge. They're like, I can't show you two of my hands, but they are straight up like two or three feet long. And I, I saw them like just right there. I was like, oh, what's up guys? And they were like, and it was tight, man. So yeah, that's my update. Uh, you guys have a good day. Um, if you wish, I challenge you to do an apocalypse swing, but you know, people are busy. You don't have to do that, but it's going to happen. So have a nice day. Tell me, t tell me where I should go. Cause I need to go somewhere. And yes, I will probably be, uh, documenting whatever trip that I go on. So.